Hey guys, Hello Bella here, and I want to do a haul video. I recently went to a Goodwill that I don't usually go to. I picked up 22 items to resell on eBay. I have been selling on eBay for more than half my life. I'm about to turn 30, and I've been selling on eBay since I was 13. Uh, I have started a new iteration of my business where I'm looking more closely at the numbers, being more picky about what I source, and trying to basically make higher profit per sale so I can touch less items because thrifting and reselling is a very labor and time intensive job. And I think that anyone who says otherwise is probably lying to you. Um, so I wanted to go over the numbers a little bit because one of the things that I've struggled with is learning not to pick up certain things and learning that like, okay, that's going to take too long to sell. Um, you know, you're paying too much for that or you just like that. That doesn't actually have um, comps to support it. And if you don't know what comps are, that's basically the concept of looking at eBay sold listings. eBay is going to tell you what has sold within the last 90 days. And the more specific that you can be, the better when you're looking up something. So if you look up something like um, Talbot's 3X, um, linen that would be um, a way to, to run a comp on that but if you're not specific and you just look up Talbot's 3x or just Talbot's linen um, it's not going to give you as specific of a comp. So here's my receipt from Goodwill. I spent $81.78. I got 22 items um, and I paid $3.72 per item. So I feel like that's a pretty good average price per item. I did stay in that store for three hours. So that's a significant chunk of time of working. And I also estimated that it's gonna take me another three hours to list and ship all of this. And that is if I work fairly quickly. And I'm also um, wanting to factor in, you know, paying myself the value of my time. And that also means not picking up things that aren't selling for enough money because if I'm listing it and I'm only making like five or six dollars, it's just not enough. Um, at this point, I really need my minimum to be closer to eight to ten dollars per sale. So I did go in and calculate that I need to make two hundred and sixty two dollars to make my eighty two dollars back and then pay myself $30 an hour for the listing and the sourcing. And that also doesn't even include like time traveling. I am in Birmingham for a doctor's appointment, so I'm kind of here anyways, but because of the way that my running a business works and because I worked while I was here, I can technically write off many aspects of this trip. So I'm gonna make use of my business deductions doing that. So in total, I got 13 clothing items and nine items that are considered like hard goods. And most of them are from the health and beauty category. And most of them account for most of the profit that I will make on this haul. And one thing that I wanted to touch on is that, to be honest, you guys, those items took me five minutes to find and the clothing took the other two and a half hours pretty much so i really want to get out of clothing i mean i love 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 looking at vintage clothes um but most of the money and the quick sales come from hard goods for me and i've been an everything seller i guess for a while i started out doing books initially um and i've, I've been doing it for 10 years so obviously i've sold a lot of different things but clothing to me is just Obviously, there's a, so much of it at the thrift store, but um, I'd, I'd much rather get into hard goods if possible. But in this video, I want to go over everything that I picked up. I'm going to show it to you and tell you, um, you know, the brand, the label, the factors that led to me picking it up. And bear with me because I'm in a hotel room. I um, wanted to get this video out and I liked the backdrop, so I figured what the heck, just go ahead and record it today. I'm sure that it sounds a little different and looks a little different. Please give me a thumbs up for carrying all of the Goodwill haul um, up to the third floor to show you guys. First item I picked up is actually for me. You have to give yourself a little something. So I just got this little chunky um, striped sweater and this was $5.99. Um, the most expensive items that I bought were $5.99. So that was full price at this store. Um, the next item is an Oakley polo. Um, Oakley is a brand that doesn't always put the logo um, on the shirt. So it just looks like a little O. Um, I found this before. I found actually an Oakley puffer vest that my thrift store had marked to $4 and it was um, it, it was a like goose down jacket and it sold for 40. Um, so Oakley, basically you just want to look for that O. So this item is a vintage sweater made in Ireland and um, I've never seen this before, but um, it's 100% wool. And so the brand, I guess is Annie 
Le Winter, um, and I did not find a size on it, so I'm just gonna have to measure it. It looks like it's about a size large for women, um, but that is something that I'll probably price around $50. This is one of those scenarios where I didn't see a lot of comps for that exact brand, but I did see comps for a 100% wool sweater made in Ireland, and I got that for $5.99. The next item is from a brand called Gimmicks. Um, this is similar to Free People in their style, the boho flowy kind of stuff, and the tags also look like Free People tags, so it's pretty easy to spot. Um, it's got the metal like uh, tag here, um, and this was a size large. Um, the style is very um, like floral boho looking so I think this should sell for around $30. Um, I don't pick up as much gimmicks anymore but since this was only three bucks because yellow was half off I did make use of their sale. Um, having a half off sale definitely pushed uh, some of these through. The next item is linen and this is from Charter Club. This is a women's size large and I did see comps for this exact shirt selling for $25 to $30 and so I picked that up for $6. This brand, Soft Surroundings, I have not successfully sold it yet, but I keep seeing it in other people's videos. So I picked up a size large and it's gonna be a guinea pig item for me. I paid $6 for it, but it is very, very vibrant and I feel like it will photograph well. One thing I always look for is like, how do I think this item will photograph? Um, this is like what I would consider style-based um, pickup. This is a 2X vintage flannel. Um, and the color scheme is really interesting on it. It's got the different like patchwork element to it. The brand is American Edition, so not really familiar with that brand. Um, but, but since it's a size 2X and it's just a really cool type of pattern, I feel like I'm going to list this for around $30 and I got it for 3 bucks. This brand is called Ascend. Um, this is kind of new to me. Um, this is a size um, 18, so bigger size. They are like a hiking type of pants. They are capri pants, which is something that I feel like maybe goes against me on the sale, but they're in incredibly good condition and they were um, $3.50. And being a size 18, I feel like that's just a little bit harder to find. So. I picked up this and I, I found decent comps for this, so I'm probably gonna list this around $30. Okay, bring out your time machine because this is a um, Juicy Couture track suit. This is a size 1X um, and you know, you might've seen the resurgence of Juicy Couture. Um, this looks like one of the newer ones and it was $5 for the whole track suit. So obviously, um, not a bad deal there. Um, being a size 1X, I think it's going to help as well. So I've got the top and the bottom. Um, yeah, do you guys remember these? Did you wear this at school? I definitely had like, I think I had a pink juicy tracksuit in high school. And it looks like everything that we had is coming back. So style is so, so cyclical. This is a giant gown, if you can see it. Um, I sell a lot of nightgowns. And you wouldn't think to look over there, but I had pretty good luck with a few of them. Um, this one is by the brand Victorian Trading Co. Um, they had some pretty good comps and the style of it is gonna help as well because it's just, it's very vintage looking. It's a full length, very, very long garment. So I should probably list this for around $40. Next item is by a brand called Game Winner. These are a 2X. These are some men's pants. I've never sold this brand before. These are hunting slash hiking pants um, and they were half off as well. So they were $3. I saw comps for $25 to $40 on these um, and these are in pretty good condition. They had like one small little snag, um, but I think if you are hunting in it, you probably don't care about a little imperfection like that. I typically try to steer clear of clothing that need repair or cleaning or anything like that. But for this, um, given the category, I feel like, you know, it's not going to be too hard to push that sale through. But hunting and hiking is um, known for having more expensive clothing. So just keep that in mind. Those are, those are expensive hobbies. Next up, we have a vintage Dickies shirt. Now, Dickies is not a brand that I would typically pick up because it's pretty saturated and you can get this stuff new for pretty cheap. Um, but just given this pattern, 
Um, it's giving like Charlie Sheen energy or just, you know, uh, bowling, that type of vibe. And it was a 2XL. So with those factors in mind, that is why I picked this up. I think I'm going to list this for 40. I actually saw one listed on Poshmark for 70 and I don't think it was a 2X. So I have to do a little bit more research on this, but this one was $4.99. So this is my last clothing item that I'll show you guys. This is Paul Smith. These are Paul Smith pants. These are a men's size 38. They are navy. Never sold this brand before either. Um, I definitely feel like I was in a more ritzy area. Um, I live in rural Alabama and so Birmingham is less rural. Um, it's more um, surgeons and doctors and things like that. And so, you know, you get more upscale brands, but I'm going to hope to get 30 to 40 out of these. And I paid $3.50 because it was on the yellow tax sale. So now that we've gone through all of that clothing, I'm going to show you the hard goods that I got. These are mostly like shampoos and hair treatments. And I found a lot by the same brand. The brand is called Wen, um, W-E-N. And these comps were crazy. Um, $40, $30. I found quite a few of those. So if you see this brand, this is what it looks like, W-E-N. Here's another one. This is in the fig. Um, this was $1.99. This one was 99 cents. And you just... I don't know, this is gonna be a great sale. I'm thinking about lotting these all together. Um, this one is the Tea Tree Styling Cream. Um, look up comps for the brand Win Styling Cream and they're anywhere between 20 to $50. Um, and I have three of those and then I also have, this one is actually still sealed in the plastic. I got that for $1.99. This is the Pomegranate Finishing Treatment Cream. Um, and this, I think, will probably bring at least $30. Um, that is, that's why I'm saying like it's, it's much easier for me to list this type of stuff. I can get the quick sale, don't have to take measurements, don't have to take a ton of photos. Most people are happy with their order, so I'm leaning more towards hard goods when it comes to reselling. This is a tile and grout cleaning kit. This was $2.99 and I saw comps for $25 to $30. It's fairly lightweight so I'll probably list this for $29.95 or best offer and take a $25 offer. I do use best offer if I want to move something fairly quickly. One of the things I've been doing lately is letting my listings run for 30 days and then if they don't get enough traction I'll add best offer after that. Um, but I do want to give things a chance to sell. Um, you know, when things are selling immediately, it typically means that you've priced it maybe a little too low. Um, it all depends on your business strategy. Of course, if you want to get things out the door and get your money back quickly, you can do it that way. Or if you want to wait, you can always wait and get the most. And so I think most resellers who are successful probably do a good mix of both of those strategies. This is another win product, but it says 613 by Chaz Dean. This is a ultra nourishing daily cleansing treatment, lemon, rosemary, vanilla bean. Um, so the comps on this were about $50 and it was $2.99. So I should make a great profit on this. Um, this is another thing that I've really not heard of. I guess it's a mousse. Artec Kiwi Color Reflection Shaping Foam. Comps on this were about $30 and I paid $1.99 for that. This was probably my best find. I'll go ahead and maybe open it so I can show you guys. I got it to $3.99. Um, the comps on this shampoo were anywhere between like 130 to 80. Um, unfortunately, it's not full. I would say it's 70% full, but I've sold quite a bit of stuff that has, you know, some of it missing. I'll probably list this for around 60. Um, I'll just have to check it out. The brand is Orib or Orib. Um, and I was just amazed at the comps on this. And then I also found the conditioner, if I can get it out of this dang bag. So this is the conditioner. Um, and you know, you, you might not think to look at things like these, but one thing that I've noticed is that people don't always check the bags at thrift stores because they just think it's a bunch of crap. So um, I've found so many good things in the bag. So I always check those even for like 
toys and stuff. You can find like vintage Barbies and things like that. I have a friend who picks up a lot of toys and you know, she'll buy the bag for like something that she wants just one thing in the bag and then she'll just discard the rest. So definitely don't sleep on the bags at thrift stores. Okay guys, this is my last item. And after all of this, I'm gonna go to the Goodwill bins. So this is my haul from yesterday. And then today I'm still in Birmingham. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the bins today. I've got my bags ready. I probably need to have another cup of coffee even though I'm talking 90 to nothing, but I'm trying to get through this so you guys will learn quickly what types of things to pick up. When I was first starting out, these kinds of videos really helped me visualize what I needed to be looking for. Um, so this was $4.99. Typically would not wanna pay that much, but this actually had five items in it and they're all makeup. Three of them were Styla. If you don't know, Styla is an expensive brand for makeup. They sell it at Ulta. Um, and this came with some discontinued colors of their uh, lip gloss. This is all day sheer liquid lipstick. To be honest with you, I don't really, I don't get heavy into makeup, but I definitely sell makeup. So I'm gonna list those probably separately. Um, I think one of them was comping for like $50 at one point, which I may not necessarily get that. Um, but I should more than quadruple my money on this. I don't know if this is worth anything. This is Tory Bell Magnitude. That looks like something that could be lauded with something else. If you have a lot of things that are not really more than $5 each, you can always save them up and make a lot and then say like makeup lot of 10 items. Um, that is what I'll do with some of the things because you know if you buy these bags, you wind up with a couple of duds in each bag put all your duds together and then make one listing for that so that you get a little bit of that money back out of it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I know this was a longer video, but I wanted to do this Goodwill haul because I haven't done one in a while. And I know that when you're first starting out, looking at stuff is, it's overwhelming to go to a thrift store and just see like thousands of items and not know what to pick up. And so the more that you learn, the better that you'll get at this, you will develop the eye for it as people say um, my boyfriend's always saying like yo you got the eye you got the eye and i'm like i've been doing this for 10 years so you know how much crap that i've looked at you know it's it's insane the amount of time that i've physically spent in the thrift store so and and saying all of that i'm about to get my stuff together and go right back to the thrift store so i hope that you guys enjoyed the video i gotta get back to it i'm gonna do one more day of sourcing and then i've got a list oh god i'm wanting to hire an employee to do listing haven't gotten to that that point yet where I'm quite ready but I am starting the process of listing out my I guess SOPs or you know you write down exactly what you want your employee to do um, so I'm in the works to get a lister don't know exactly how that's gonna work out but I am tired of listing it is the one bottleneck in my business that I just absolutely hate it's taking up too much of my time and I want to figure out a way where I can do more of what I like which is sourcing, obviously, dopamine, um, and less of what I don't like. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that you'll continue um, watching me on my eBay journey. I am trying to get my 90 day total up to 15,000. Um, based on my profit margins, I think that that would mean, um, I, I'm running at around 29 to 35% profit overall. That's everything in. Um, and so I would need to sell about $5,000 a month to make about $1,500 a month. So let me know what you think about those numbers and how that compares to your business. I would love to hear if that is um, in line with what you guys are working with. But anyways, I will catch you in the next video. Take care until then, and I hope you guys have a great week.